Hey guys, welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about oil clearances in your rod and main bearings. This is applicable to any engine, any year made. It doesn't matter. It's something you need to know how it's done if you're rebuilding your engine. I'm going to show you exactly how, what's involved in doing that process so you are armed when you talk to your machinist or your engine builder. That doesn't mean you have to do this on your own, but you can double check their work if you want. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send it to a professional to actually have it the, bear, the bearings blueprinted, and then I can double check the work. Okay, so that's why we're here. I'm going to show you the process. And if you're new, welcome. I'm going through this process because I had an oil starvation issue, tore up the bearings, and my crank had some scoring on the journals. So I just got the crank back from polishing. And I was like, so excited to tell my wife I got my crank polished today. No, it didn't go well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, don't worry. There'll be a lot of jokes coming. So let's get to the workbench and show you what tools you need and get this process started. All right, here's my setup. Uh, I, I saw this from someone else. I can't take credit for it. This is uh, a V block I made out of two by sixes. The V is slightly less than the uh, diameter of the journal. So then we can measure this journal without any interference. We can also spin this around really easily. You can also do this in the block, but I prefer the workbench because we can stand here and take our measurements, which is awesome. So the tools we're going to need, besides a pen, is a micrometer. So the micrometers I have uh, are down to one ten thousandth. Highly recommend that uh, precision. And then try and get uh, a dial bore gauge that you can afford. So this one reads to the half a thousandth. And this was about 80 bucks on Amazon. Uh, the really nice Matuyos uh, that read down to the one ten thousandth are like 350, 400 bucks. So just be prepared for that. Again, I don't need to be, get super precise because I'm going to have a professional back up my data. Now, let me show you um, on here when we are measuring, I'm basically going from right to left this is the front of the engine the bearing journals are one through five one two three four five just like they are in the engine um, the rod journals i'm just going to do an order so it's one two three four five six seven eight um, typically in the engine it's going to be backwards it's actually two one four three but i just making it simple for myself so when i get those measurements i'm going to write them down on this chart i made on a piece of paper obviously so i don't forget it but we're all the journal diameters and then i'm going to show you guys how to check for the bearing clearance using our bore dial indicator and then same with the mains so mains here and uh, bearing diameters here and here's our recommended tolerancing for our oil clearance and this comes from butler performance now you need to research what is best for your engine now rule of thumb for any engine is typically one thou per inch diameter so i have my rod journals are 2.2 inches so times one thousandths is 2.2 thousandths to 2.5 thousandths okay so that's my target you guys need to find out what's best for your engine and your type of engine build for example as you go up in horsepower your tolerance needs to get bigger. So here is a rod that has the bearing installed. We'll talk about this later, but this is fully torqued down. This is how we have to measure it. But when, you're, when your piston's moving back and forth and you have really high horsepower, this actually elongates from the inertia. So you need more tolerance in there to, to get uh, more oil coated on the whole bearing surface. So for those of you wondering how this works, it's a very good question. These oil ports in the crank actually provide the oil pressure between the bearing, so this is the bearing half, and the rod. So this sits over that hole. That hole applies oil pressure and there's a very thin coating of oil that prevents metal on metal contact. Now when you don't have enough oil, this is what happens. So I told you guys that I had an oil starvation issue. Notice how this is polished in the middle that's from metal on metal contact now luckily i caught it in time it didn't have uh, enough time to seize and cause a spawn bearing um, but 
there are some also some contaminants in there that cause some scoring on the journals. That's why I had my crank polished. <laughs> it's actually not a very expensive procedure to do. Um, you just have to find someone that's good at it. Now, moving forward, let's take some measurements and show you how we get our bearing clearance numbers. So while we're here, I'm going to take a measurement. And this takes some practice in getting used to, and, and especially reading this. That's probably another video. There's a ton of videos online. But this measurement is coming up 1.9. Nine 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 seven. So this is number three. So I can put that dimension down. So now that I wrote that dimension down, you lock your caliper in place. So this is the dimension of the journal. And now we're going to take our our probe and we're going to put it in between the mic surfaces, and we're going to zero out our probe. So I'll show you the other side. I'm moving the probe back and forth in the mic. You see how it's sweeping? You want to find the furthest distance, which is actually where the greatest sweep is. So it's about right there. It looks like three, one and a half thou off. So that I have to move the gauge. One and a half thousandths or three gradients, whatever it was. And now, so that's zeroed out. And this tool is brilliant because now we can actually just measure the difference between the ID of the bearings in the rod and that measurement. Let's go do that. Okay, with our rod, we want the bearings in the rod with these torqued down. So what I do, because I have a smaller vise, is I just put it in the vise like this and then tighten from the bottom. So I'm not applying any torsion or bending of the rod in the wrong direction. So once those are uh, torqued down, Put it in your vase, vase, yeah, it's going to grow a flower, your vise, and then we use our probe. So as we put it in, we're going to rock it back and forth. I'm going to show you the gauge end here. Okay, so I'm, the anvil is the probe on the, on the, on the gauge is in the center of the rod. And I'm just rocking it back and forth. You can see it's sweeping. You want to find the point where it stops and goes back. It looks like one, two, and I'm guessing seven, five. So let me go write that down. So I wrote my number down. So I'm at 2.75 thousandths. Remember our max here is two and a half. So we have too much. Now, if you're gonna err, let's say we stopped right here. This is actually okay. You can actually live with this. Do not err on the bottom side. Like don't be at 0.002. You want to err, if anything, on the top side. Now, if I want to get really critical, which I might, depending on what the professional tells me the measurement is, um, you can actually get undersized bearings. So that bearing I showed you is a standard bearing. And so you can actually order the bearing one thou undersized. So if you need to shrink this number by one thousandths, you can get a different bearing that has one thousandths less clearance. Now, if we need to do a half a thousandths, you can get two bearing sets, one standard bearing set, and then the bottom one, do the reduced size thou, one thou bearing set. That saves you a half a thou. So you can actually do that. You'd have to buy two sets of bearings, but that's how you mix and match bearings. You can actually go larger too. They're called X bearings. So you can order the same bearing with an X on the end. It means one thou bigger. So you have even one thou more clearance. So that's how you can size your bearings. I'm going to finish measuring all these. Take everything to a machine shop. Have them blueprint it. So by the time we get back, I'll have some data for us to look at. All right, I'm back from the professional machine shop who did some blueprinting for me on the bearings. They did my mains, they did the rods, and let's talk about the rods because the mains going to be another video, like I mentioned. So, interesting factoid that I learned, what they do is they actually measure the actual thickness of the bearing, multiply it by two because that's the total um, space taking up within the rod. They also measure the ID of the rod without the bearing and they also measure the rod journal on the crank 
and do the math, and that's how you come up with these numbers. So instead of using a dial bore indicator, they actually do it, measure the thickness and the actual diameters and everything, and then they can do tricks from there. Like they can actually open up the diameter or shave the cap, um, you know, to compress it a little bit. It's pretty interesting stuff. I, I wish I would have filmed it because it was a uh, like two hours of dropping knowledge on on Monty, and uh, I can only retain you know seven to ten percent of that. So, <laughs> and this is what you guys get. So anyway, I was really, really happy that I got the same measurement, right? So now what I'm going to do is go through each one. Oh, you guys didn't even tell me that I made a huge error over here. I put 199. This should be 1.19. No, I'm sorry. I'm not even talking right. Two. 0.19. I was off by 200 thousandths on all of these because I was subtracting um, the end of the mic from 2 instead of 2.2. .2. So that's my fault. That doesn't matter because the actual measurement is what we're getting off of the mic. That's, what we're that's why we register the dial bore indicator off of the actual dimension the mic has from here to here. It doesn't matter what the actual number is. If you guys, if that makes sense. And then the dial bore indicator does the math for us. So that's why that I like that trick. All right, I went ahead and measured everything again with the standard bearings in every rod, on every journal, did the same trick with using our, our mic on the journal and put it in the vise, set the dial bore indicator. And that was the measurements I got. I did several passes and roughly the same numbers. So this out, these two outliers here, Three thousand three and a quarter is number six. So I took number six apart. This is the standard bearing out of number six. I didn't show you guys this earlier, but printed on the bearing, she says STD. No, that's not what you get as the disease. That is standard. Very funny, Ryan. So here's the one thou under. Let's see where does it say? Yeah, right there, zero zero one. So that's undersized, U.S., undersized. That use, that's not United States. That's undersized. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two bearings in this rod and remeasure and see if that number changes. It damn well better. <laughs> Guys, that worked perfectly. 225. Oh, my God. I'm so excited about that. Now we can get really granular on the rest. I went ahead and added what the professionals measured in blue ink here you know, sharper pen. And remember, I measured 31 here. So I re-measured and it brought me closer to 35. So I went ahead and changed both bearing halves. And now both are at, this is two and a half thousandths. I re-measured this one. This is also two and a half. So I had some measurement error naturally. So I went ahead and preferred the professional measurement. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back through each one of these again. Make sure I'm doing it right. Because, guys, remember, when you're using this, it takes some technique. And I'm not an expert at it. So you have to get good at it and double, triple, quadruple check. I think I checked these like 10 times now. So these two I remeasured, and I did get 3,000s just like I did before. So I'm back on track. So I'm going to go ahead and, and redo the rest. And so here I'm going to change one half bearing, one half bearing. And if these are like the pro professionals say three and a half, then these will be full bearing swaps to the one thou under. And then the last two will be a half and then we'll be within spec. And we're back. So here we go. I went ahead and remeasured everything. The ones I put a square in, I agreed with. I tried my best to match that one. I couldn't. Uh, it was a little under. So I still did a full bearing swap since the professionals measured three and a half. You know, a full bearing would be two and a half. Uh, so I came up to two, four, which is fine. We're still in spec. And then the, the last one I was struggling with, uh, number eight, I could only read um, like a little under three. So I just did a half a bearing. So I got to two, four, which is awesome. We're still in spec. So this, So I did a half a bearing on one, two seven and eight and full bearings on three and four which makes sense because those had the worst scoring remember so they had to do more polishing there and if someone ever tells you that 
polishing doesn't remove material, they're full of crap because how do you get it smoother without removing material? And that's why we have to do this, these bearing swap and changes. To help you get organized, what I did was I labeled each rod one through eight, of course, but that number could, could rub off. So when you're working, I put the number of the space that's empty. So when I'm working on number three, I have it up on the workbench, I'm doing the bearing sizing and everything. If I get distracted or have to go eat lunch or take a nap because I'm getting old, then I know what rod I'm working on if the number rubbed off the rod, which it did. So I'm glad I did this process. And that's how I kept my workbench organized. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bag this. So these are clean. So I'm gonna keep them in a plastic bag until we're ready to put them in the engine and marry them to pistons. Man, this is fun, right? So stay tuned subscribe if you haven't because next episode we're going to talk about the main bearings and clearances there a little bit different challenge we have to work with so until next time you guys know the drill build them fast drive them faster see ya